So Harrison Price from the Historic Wall Center, and what a treat here on a Friday to welcome in studio, into the Nation Network studio, the relatively new head coach of the Canadian men's national team. It's our pleasure to have Jesse Marsh in studio. Thanks, How you doing, guys. coach? Yeah, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. What brings, you, what brings you to town? Yeah, we've been having some meetings with people from the Whitecaps, from uh, people in the uh, soccer community here in Vancouver. Um, we're also uh, really trying to do some fundraising for for our program. So, meeting with some potential donors and you know just people in the community that I think are are connected to the sport and connected to our team. And and we're trying to build momentum to 2026. I mean, people have have griped, and a lot of it is uh, unfounded. But people have griped that you know too much time in Toronto, but it, it sounds like you guys are trying to branch out a little bit and, and be a little bit more representative. Yeah. And you, you're right. I right. haven't been on the job that long, but I have heard that. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yes, we, you know, we were at BC place yesterday yeah. and we met with the, with the people that help run that venue. And we talked to them about, you know, getting grass in there more often so we can get some good opponents mm. and, and have some more matches there. Obviously with the world cup, uh, in two years, we know that we're going to play a lot of matches here in Vancouver. So, Although we may not be here all the time right now, I think the people in Vancouver have something really special to look forward to in 2026. You've had uh, quite a run here since you you took the job. First of all, like I think people knew that, oh, this is a different level of coach that, that they brought aboard. For those that haven't got your European resume in front of you, or not even European resume, your coaching resume, you were a player, you, you leave the play, and you, you start your coaching journey, your odyssey, where well i mean my head coaching i started in montreal mm -hmm. right I, I but right i was coaching a lot when i was playing and then i went straight into being the assistant coach for the u.s national team for the 2020 2010 world cup and then i went to montreal you know and so uh it was a big step in my life i think to be a head coach to to go and and take that team from the 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 lower division i think it was the usl then and then up to the mls was a big challenge, you know, and I, I had a lot of, I think, failures there, but I had some successes and I learned a lot and, and, and I was really appreciative of the time, uh, there and the players that I got to coach and the challenges that were involved with that. But, and, and, you know, maybe you're leading into this a little bit, but it gave me a, a window into Canada and, and Canadian soccer and, and communities here and people here. And, and so I, I think now where I sit, that wound up being a very valuable experience and, and something that, that I think has prepared me to at least understand a little bit what, what's going on up here. Reading about your background, Jesse, it's almost like, it seems like Bob Bradley had you ticketed as a coach and waiting yeah. for as a young player yeah. back in Chicago. This comes naturally to you by the looks and sounds of it. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm not sure I like my my full profession or like being labeled as a coach. It feels very old schoolish kind of limiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's what I am, you know. And so I've loved this sport. It's been really good to me. I think I've had incredible experiences. Um, Bob had a big influence on me, right? I met him. So I, you know, I was a pretty naive young kid and made a lot of bad decisions, but. I figured out pretty early on that Bob Bradley was a little bit special. And so, you know, uh, he helped get me into Princeton. So I think he should take more credit than, than I should for figuring these things out. But, um, he, you know, he, he kind of, uh, set the tone for what higher level soccer was like in training and mentality. And, and he was sometimes a son of a bitch, but he was also, I think, uh, uh, a really good mentor and a very demanding coach in many, in, in really good ways. You, Blake and I have been doing the show 13 years together here and have chronicled the rise of this sport uh, in Canada and in the U.S. You're one of the few North Americans to break through mm -hmm. uh, at the higher levels of coaching and over in Europe. How have you done it? Well, I, I again, I had a lot of people that believed in me and invested in me. And, and, and when I, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but Vancouver Whitecaps turned me down in 2014 and I was a finalist with Carl Robinson. No and so now, you know, Greg Kerfoot was a, was a really good guy to meet with. I, I saw Bob Leonarduzzi yesterday. Um, a lot of the, you know, I was out at the Whitecaps training ground and, and I I've told all of them, it was the best thing that ever happened to me <laughs> 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 because then I went to the New York Red Bulls and you know, I, I, I that was my window into Europe 
was the Germans who, and Austrians who were running that club or that organization. And they believed in me. You know, they invested in me. I invested in them. I had to learn German. I didn't have to, but I did. Um, and then they were adamant about me coming to Europe and they loved the story of kind of the extension of, to America uh, and what I represented in that sense. So, yeah, I would say I'm almost like a German trained coach, which I think is a good thing because they're very detailed. They're very organized. It's a, it's a great, rich footballing nation. And, and I was really thankful for the experience. For those yeah. that, uh, a lot of stars on that national team sweater. Yes. Yes. Too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For those that don't, uh, no Red Bull soccer. It has a it has a brand. Um, it has it has a style attached to it. Whether you're in Salzburg or New York or <laughs> or wherever, um, are you playing Red Bulls soccer with Canada? Yeah, it's rock and roll. Yeah, you know it's it's you know hit you in the mouth and go after them yeah. and, and make them uncomfortable and and then and then also you know it, I think it accelerates players' uh, development. Um, so it's not it's not the exact version, but it is a version of of what I liked to coach. And and you know, the, every time that that I would be talked about in national team circles, not just the U.S. or Canada, but different places, there was always this stupid, ignorant commentary that you can't have a style of play with the national team. Which, like, then what what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You're just what you're just come together and then just put them on the pitch, like. You have to have a style of play. I don't care what sport you're talking about and and what team. Like it's, it's is it eleven individuals if you don't have a style of play? Yeah, like, it's ridiculous. I yeah. mean, it, regardless, your job and when you're a coach or when you're a team is to be bigger than the sum of the parts, right? And the way you do that is you have a way. You have a way, mm -hmm. and and so this has been great, and and it was good because I met with a lot of national team coaches in Europe before I took this job, and I asked them a bunch of questions, you know, but one of them was, all right, what do you, what do you, what do you get out of trying to Im implement a style of play? And, and look, you, you would get different versions of it from different people, but, but my main mentor in Germany is a guy named Ralph Rangnick and he coaches Austria now. And he was like, I do almost exactly the same thing I do with a club. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, let's go for it. I want to take you back to um, the late winter, early spring of this year. We're all fretting about who is going to coach this team and when is he going to get here because we got a pretty good squad, got a chance to do something at this expanded Copa that we were all so excited about. You get hired on May 13th. Three weeks later, you're on the pitch in the Netherlands and you lose 4 0. And we're all sitting there going, they didn't give the coach enough runway. This could be a disaster. Where are you? Where's your mindset after four nil against the Netherlands, knowing you've only got the what the French the the France match to sort of get things right we before were, we, we were get going for real? We were clinging to it was a good first half. Yeah. It was a good first half. <laughs> um well I, I would even go, I think it was the third training session, and I kind of was walking off the pitch with Mauro Biello and the and the coaching staff, and I said, Look, we could have a tough summer. Um, but I'm, I know now working with these guys that we we will be good. And it was because you could see their ability to adapt and learn, and you could see their mentality to do everything they could to, to, to follow what I was presenting. Um, and look, let, let, so it's, it, when I took the job, here are the first seven games. Okay. It's Holland, it's France, then it's Argentina, Peru, Chile, and then it's us and Mexico. So I thought, all right, so we'll go 0 and 7. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be okay. And, yeah, and then and then everyone will hate me and yeah. then we'll build the team, you know? But um I, I knew look, I knew first half against Holland and I knew that they were a good team. We played well, mm -hmm. you know, and I knew that and I made some changes in the game that I was just trying, I needed to get, I needed to see guys on the pitch. And if it would have been a match that was more meaningful, I would have operated differently. Right. Right. And so, but but we we gained some important lessons out of that match, and and then I gained more information about player personnel, and 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 then you know it it it, it was then key for me to to reinforce the things that were going to make them better, and I had a few just check check mark things that that I knew right away that if they understood why things were good and why things were bad, and if we were able to implement those lessons in the next match, that we would be better in that match. I didn't expect us to play so well against France as we did, but. But I knew, again, I, I could tell that we were going to be good. Copa was uh, 
It's a hell of a ride. Um, it was a mess, and you've commented on that, that it, parts of it just did, were not professional, and, and we saw that from the outside even. But was it fun just to be in the mix again, just to just to have that heat and to have games of import again? Like It, it looked like as much as you were kind of in a blender there, both because of the tournament and you were still new to the gig, uh, what was that experience like in terms of just being in the mix again? Yeah, I mean, look, for me... If you go, you know, it's been a long time, probably the last time I, I had a team that w we were in matches where we knew we would win and we knew we were better was in, was in Austria when I was in Salzburg. And when we play some league matches, you knew we were better. But, you know, for the last three years that I've coached, it's always been, all right, you know, here, here we go. Some high-level games, Champions League matches, best teams in the world, best coaches in the world, best players in the world. So... In some ways, it's I would have it no other way. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things that'll be tougher for me is when we start playing. You know, at some point, well, we will have some lesser opponents, and and that won't be. Uh, you know, I'll still have to motivate in myself and the team in all the right ways to to know that we still have to capitalize on every moment. Um, but you know, I wasn't phased by any of it. I and either were, and I think they they could kind of look. You would have to speak to the players. A little bit, but I I feel like they fed off of my confidence and my understanding of what these games were and what it was going to require. And they, looking at me, they could kind of be like, "All right, we're 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 good. We're we're good here. We're ready." Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, a lot. I, I I it's been a pleasure to work with these guys. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. there there's no egos in the team. They they love to be with each other, play with each other. They love to play for the national team. They're they're really uh, a fun, special team and great character, almost too good. <laughs> so I've been telling them like we need more guys that that are that ha we could use a couple of egos, like you know, guys who are really want to push the envelope. You have and, Richie, you have Richie yeah. stirring shit up, but yeah, other but, than but that, even Richie's too nice, <laughs> man. I can tell you, he's even. <laughs> but they're great. They're great lads. Really, they're great lads. So for us as a Canadian soccer public. This is also very new, Jesse, with yeah. the men's national team. Like it is the mind blowing emoji, you know, to sit there and watch our players go toe to toe on a pitch with the likes of, you know, global giants like Lionel Messi and Suarez. Yeah. Uh, did you sense any starstruckness from the players? Because that's something that we wondered about going into these matches. No. I mean, look, one of the things is Messi now plays in MLS. So some of them have already played against Messi, you know, or most of them. And so that, that effect, wasn't quite the same um you know and I, I the the france the france game could have been that moment right but then mbappe was a little hurt so he didn't start and he came off the bench and he almost torched us a few times but like you know and then there's a number of guys playing in europe and playing in champions league that have these experiences more and and now i think we're going to get it even more because we were from a good copa able to get more players and bigger clubs and we'll we'll grow with their experiences so this was an important summer. Probably I didn't realize at the time how important it was because I was just like, all right, we got to get this thing started. But the fact that we have momentum now in so many ways will be a major benefit for us in 2026. Uh, we do want to get some player reviews. We're going to do some rapid fire sort of player reviews um, before you, you leave. But let's quickly address just the window that just passed. Um, uh, two hours of my life that I'll never get back versus Mexico. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was really fun versus the U the U.S. And it's a friendly. But did the guys feel like there was a little little something at stake there because they they had some giddy up? Yeah, I think they we we knew and we even talked about the fact that this was a measuring stick for us and that we believe that we made major progress. But we had to. It, you're all. Your next test is always the most important test, right? So I think we were excited about the U.S. Um, you know, the, the, in the U.S., they wanted to make it about me. And, but within our team, it was, it was about us and what we were trying to accomplish. And the focus and concentration on that was at a really high level. So I knew we would play well. Like, look, first half should be 4-0, right? Yeah. We, we smoke yeah. them. We smoke them. And... And, you know, we're, we're still that that's a little bit where we are in our in our stage as well as we don't really have that ruthlessness yet where when we're on top of teams and we've got our thumb on them that that we bury them, you know, so but but we'll get there. We will get there. Um, but, you know, I mean, the 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 the, the it's been very linear. 
You know, it's been very right now. We've had a lot of success and we keep building. There's going to be time. There's going to be a game where we have a little bit of a slip up and and then we'll have to readjust. And but, you know, I think the reason it's been linear is because the players are in there. They see the benefits. They have a strong belief. They have quality and they're they're smart. And so we've been able to to all together push the right buttons to keep pushing. You mentioned um, U.S. media wanting to make it about you. How much have you paid attention to this? The one that got away, he's up there coaching Canada. Meanwhile, our program is in shambles. Why isn't he here? How much of attention have you paid to that? Well, We're not, greatly amused by it. Do yeah, you understand? Yeah. And I'm not surprised mm -hmm. because my, over the years, my access to, to what's been going on there has, hasn't always been positive. Right. Um, but uh, one of the, one of the beauties here is we know that, that we have work to do. Right. And so it gives us a platform to say, all right, look, we've there's been some slip ups. There's been some some things that need to be ironed out. But but I think from here, we're going to launch this thing in a way to really create a foundation. And, you know, Kevin's sitting Kevin Blue is sitting right here. And I'm not just saying this because he's my boss and he's in the room, but he's a more he's the most important person right now in Canadian soccer. And he i i know that he will have ability to structure this in a way where 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 we can have better youth national team programs where we can have a better connections to the professional teams and the clubs and where we can really create more of a development path and identify players at young ages and put them in good training and and develop them the right way all of this needs to be supported by finances by structure by education and and he will wind up being the most important appointment in this country's sports history um and then i'm a, i'm along to help any way i can and 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 to try to use my experiences to help you know reinforce and continue the development that's been taking place and look, look i say there's a lot that needs to be done but but there's a lot of good that's already happened and that's the proof of that is the player pool right i mean it's not like we're taking over a a, a nation that has had no idea of how to raise uh, some important players we we clearly have a, a special player pool well, and Blake and I talked about this also for the entire time we've been doing the show. Like, how is a country where every little boy and girl plays soccer at some point? Why haven't we been able to produce the elite players? We have them now, uh, include, including Alfonso Davies. A word or two, your thoughts and observations now that you've had a chance to coach the young man. He is dying, I think, for um, investment in him. Right. And and he he as good as he is, I think he knows he can be so much better. What do you mean by that investment in him? Well, I think, you know, he's always at, at Bayern. I think he's considered the kid that can be really good that plays on the left. They don't really invest in him in terms of the fabric of what the team is, you know, in terms of the leadership. And but partly because he's young, partly because he's a foreigner. I've been to Germany. German Germany is very German centric. You know, they accept foreigners especially if they're good players so i think they've accepted alfonso fully but he's not a he's not part of their leadership group. cornerstone no. yeah, yeah you know and and i think um he he with it it's not he high performing individuals they don't just consider themselves talented they consider themselves like eager to prove and show how good they can be and that's what fonzie he he, he i think just wants to be invested in and pushed and and given the clues as to how he can keep going and and to be the best that he can possibly be and and for us as a nation i think it's a perfect time for him to be the captain for him to be invested in for him to be called on more to i mean and and i think even with some of the uh, documentary type stuff that's out there you can see that he's he's becoming so much more than just a, a good left-sided player right so he, he, his defensive side has rounded really into we've see, seen this in the last you know, two games for sure, but even beyond that into Copa where his defensive play is improving so much. Um, we used to ask, oh, should he play more forward so that he can be involved offensively? We saw him as a white cap and, and uh, soon after that as a spectacular offensive player. Uh, the only thing is you've got depth now forward on the pitch where you don't necessarily need to ask him to do that. Is it still tempting though uh, to get him further up? Yeah, and we look, we use him as a left back defensively and we ask him to push up the field more uh, as an attacker and the way we create some rotations. 
he could be more aggressive for sure mm-hmm. in the attacking part of the pitch and really join in and be part of what we do from an attacking perspective. But I think he's really trying to also focus on how to play his role and tactically be connected with what we're asking. And I think he trusts his teammates more than he maybe did in the past where he doesn't feel like, and and, and I've reinforced that with him. Like, I'm like, you don't have to be everything for this team. That goal against Panama, he just said, no, I'm doing this all. And yeah, yeah. He, he just yeah. did it all, right? Look, and he yeah. can't. I mean, he yeah. has that ability. Yeah. But I think he knows for for him to be at his – for for the team to be at his best, he just needs to be good at what he does. And he doesn't have to have the solutions for everything. Now, there will be times where maybe we push him up the pitch or – or where you know he will have the opportunity to have a bigger impact in the uh, offensive part of the of the pitch, but um, I've really just you know just kind of been on him to like you know just be himself and be the best version of what we need from him, and to trust that that's the best thing that, that that's what we need for the team. And 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 I think it's seen that we have a really solid foundation of like tactically what we're doing. I mean you know I mean you get, we can talk about the Mexico game, and you said, but Mexico was afraid of us. Yeah, they were. They they just wanted to follow us, limit and limit our space, limit our ability to get out and into the open space and attack. And and it was an effective strategy. But what a what a statement. Right. What a statement. Staggering. That, yeah. Jesse staggering. So, so I think we're developing something that even other people are recognizing mm-hmm. and going, hey, what's going on up in Canada? Uh, last question for me, Coach. Uh, you're playing Panama in Toronto on October 15th. And uh, the release from Canada Soccer talked about another match in the international window are you uh, times a little short on that? Or are you, uh, it, it's going to be a different kind of window for us and we'll make an announcement probably here soon, but okay. I don't want to ruin any, but we're going to do something special, something that will involve the community. And so we're, we're, we're waiting. Hopefully we'll make an announcement here in a week or so. And we're excited about what the plan will be. Okay. Brought in Nico Seeger, any other dual nationals you've got your eye on anybody? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't want to put any pressure out there. I mean, you could probably know the names mm-hmm. that we're talking mm-hmm. to, but we've had very positive discussions and interactions with some important players. And I'm, I'm hopeful that by the end of the year that we can start to solidify a few more guys into the group. Maybe steal from, uh, some of your chief rivals there's mexican mexican canadian Mm, that would be good yeah that would be good Uh, just lastly when are we going to see here at bc place playing a game good question um like i said we're we're the key is getting grass in there you know because I, i think part of it is also getting the right kind of opponents and and for sure our players to play on on the right kinds of pitches as well so Next year, we are focused on trying to to solidify and uh, a few different things. Like even in the talks is is maybe like a January type camp where where like the U.S. has done over the years, where where then we call in some young players and then maybe we get some opponents and then maybe it's it's possibility to get a. We're we're working on different things. All right, but I've I've been asked that again. Uh, we've go through it. We're so, going to get some games here. So. Um, Blake can attest because uh, I've, I've banged this drum for for a long, long time. Y- you mentioned grass, as you well know, you're from Wisconsin. Yeah, we are a multi-sport society here, right? Yeah. Like we play more than just soccer. A lot of these countries, it's soccer, soccer, soccer. Yeah. Um. Why not embrace turf? Why not turn turf into our advantage? We bring teams over. They whine and complain about playing on turf. But we're okay because we just play regardless yeah. of the surface. No, no, no. Look, it, it, there will be times that that we can use it as an advantage. And I think the 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 previous regime with John and going up to Edmonton and playing some games here, this was really clever, right? And and you're right. Why not use what we have to our advantage and and free some tamales? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm all I'm all with you on that. Um, but you know, it's just it's 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 about it's about player safety a little bit, right? Like you just. It, we, we already are asking these guys to travel all over the world and come and play matches. And we want to just make sure that we put them in an environment where we're not damaging them and their careers and making sure that, that we're keeping them healthy and clean. And so, but, but we're not, a, it's not, it's not the end all be all. Like we need, we, we will, we'll, we'll find times mm-hmm. to, to make this work. Like we'll, we'll, we'll find time. We'll let you get out well, of here yeah. and, and watch the uh, Pochettino press conference so that oh, you that can be, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, can you, can you, 
conjure some animosity towards Posh about uh, no, no, he's a good man. Yeah, he's a good man, really good man, and I think he'll do a good job. I think it, I'm I'm looking for this will be great. It's gonna be great. This it's gonna be, be a lot of fun, yeah. Jesse. Uh, no we, we've already had a blast here with Canadian soccer over the last two years, and the best is yet to come. Thank you, sir, for the yeah, time. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys.